Hey everybody. We are here today with Cassandra from Saffron Sage Astrology. We are going to be talking about Uranus. Uranus in a natal chart, what Uranus is, um, different ways that it can impact different planets, depending on the aspects that it makes, all that kind of stuff. Say, hey, what's up? What? <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. So Uranus, what are, what are you, when you think about that planet, what do you, what comes to mind first? Yeah, I mean, some of the keywords would be like change, disruptions, um, rebelliousness, uh, not fitting in, being different. Um, you know, so like for transits, I would say changes. Um, and then maybe where it's at in the chart, sometimes there there are disruptions in that area, or sometimes you might be the disruption in that area. <laughs> so, um, and then people with having a strong, strong natal Uranus are going to be, they're going to relate more to like the rebellious or the not fitting in or having values that are kind of different than the mainstream kind of thing. What would you consider um, like a strong Uranus? I would say if you have Aquarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising, or if you have Uranus um, in a tight orb aspect, you know, like within six degrees to a personal planet. So like, yeah, yeah that's that's kind of what I, and it, I guess, you know, if it's, if it's in an angular house, it's gonna have a little bit of strength too, um, but maybe not always as personal, just depending on different things. Kind of, yeah, what it's, what else what's going on with it but yeah no it, they do it does yeah it's, they strike me as um a little amplified when they're in a when they're in the first fourth seventh or ten yeah in yeah some some way <laughs> in some kind of way yeah where you might not identify it as me you know it might not be you in the chart but it might be an energy you experience when you're going into that sphere of life based on the house absolutely absolutely so yeah, a little, um, perhaps a little less personal, but still like felt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, when I, when I think of, when I think of Uranus, I think of those, those, those words you mentioned, liberation is another one that I like for it. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, and it's like, at it's like highest, you know, at it's, at it's highest vibration has got <laughs> They all have their lower vibration. All the planets have their lower vibrations, but at its highest, it feels very like very liberating. Yes, yeah, I like that term as well. I have, wouldn't have thought of it, but like, especially for tran like transits to Uranus, mm -hmm. you're going to want to be liberated. What you know, whether you can or not, is a different story. But like, it just <laughs> makes you crave that freedom. It does. Yeah, it does. Like um. The squares, right? Like square, like transit you're on a squaring a natal planet could uh there could be some stress with that. You know, you're on this is like, come with me, it can be liberated. And the planet's like, hold up, <laughs> you know, sometimes anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. It can be like a forced change where it's like even if you want the freedom, you you sort of still with a square, it's like you have to make some kind of adjustment to be able to have it. Yeah. Yeah, there's some like growing pains some <laughs> yeah yeah and sometimes i've noticed when uranus hits especially like something like the uranus how you know the half return the opposition mm -hmm. it's like the person wants to break free of everything that has is stifling but they don't always have the structures in place to be able to so that's kind of you know it's that feeling of like wanting to get out of a situation but then having to kind of sit with it and, and figure out the path while you're all angsty. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's another angsty is another, is another good one. That's not really, that's not really one that I would normally, that's not a word that I guess I would normally think of, but it actually is a good one for uh, for your honest too. Cause there yeah. is. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 go on. Go, no, seriously. Uh, restless. Restless was what I was thinking too, because it's like that, the restlessness, especially with like if you have a strong Uranus with your personal planets, you could have like everything being just fine, but you want it to change anyway, just because it's been that way for too long. And you just, you know, there's that inner restlessness of like, 
needing something to be different or even if the thing itself isn't a problem necessarily, it's just like you don't necessarily like being bored or being stuck in the same situation for too long. It's like just needing a little, a little upheaval. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I also find that people that have like a, like a strong, strong Uranus in their chart, it, even if they don't really like change, change seems to find them. <laughs> like, <laughs> and you know, depending on what's going on, it they, they may not like it, but it still seems to find them anyway. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good point because it's like, yeah, because you could have like a bunch of cancer and Taurus mm-hmm. and then have a strong Uranus and it's like, you're going to have change, but you don't want to change. <laughs> you oh, yeah. would really prefer things stay the way they are. Yes. Where you're yeah. comfortable, where you're secure. And then like, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you could have like, um, somebody could have like their, they could have their sun and moon in Taurus. It could be squaring Uranus and Aquarius and Uranus and Aquarius like, fuck this security shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah, I could see that definitely. <laughs> yeah. So because it's your honest, because I wasn't real structured today with this, <laughs> do you want do you want to uh do you want to talk about like different possibilities for like the aspects that it could, you know, like you're honest hitting like a I don't know, the sun, say. What could that look like? Uh in, in different aspects of me, you know, in the chart. Like um yeah so like uranus sun if it's like a conjunction the person's gonna really relate to um aquarius energy and just you know feel like they are uranus in some way right so one of the ways um through through all the aspects is i think of the story of uranus right how like he was married to mother earth and then um his son castrated him and then he like flew to the sky. That's like the short version, but it's Mm -hmm. like identifying with the traumatic event or identifying with something that makes you very different or something painful. So that's one of the ways that could show up. Um, Another way too, you know, with, with Uranus son is like um, really putting a lot of, um, uh, you know, putting a lot of energy on what you know, um, yeah. like knowledge and, and I'm wanting to find a better way, right? Because Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius and Aquarius is all about kind of stepping outside of whatever's normal or whatever the current system is or the current structure to kind of want to make a better one. So there's sometimes with Uranus sun, like you can just see a better way for either for humanity or or even just with the field that you're in or the work that you do, there's like an emphasis on um, improvement or change, you know, in that sense. Like progress, future focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And usually there's also a desire to be helpful um, in my experience with Aquarius placements. Um, you know, like they they want to, or Uranus, sorry, Uranus, um, with the sun or anything else, but like with, with the sun is going to be part of who you feel like you are, you know, like you're the person who sees the solution or you're the person who knows more. Sometimes that can happen where it's mm-hmm. like just, um, really taking a lot of pride or, or having it really mean something about you, what you know, or, um, that kind of thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that that's kind of, and like, and like, so those things, like if, if, if you were talking about you're honest, like squaring the sun, you might be, you would be looking at like those, um, those things kind of, there being like a, like a stress with them, like with the, I, with the, with the identity, with the ego, having stress with like, or being stressed by, or progress or, <laughs> you know, or, 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 or things, things of that, that, or it's possible it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, because it's like anytime something has to change that would really challenge your identity. It would almost be with your and a sun, it would always be kind of destabilizing to have that aspect because the sun is such a constant, you know, like 
consistent energy and Uranus is such a disruptive energy. Wild so it's heart. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you may find change to be more destabilizing or more destabilizing changes happen or more changes throughout your life that sort of force you to re find a new identity or upgrade your identity in some way that, you know, maybe you hadn't planned on that kind of thing could happen too. What about fracturing or fragmentation? What of do you like, mean? well, I, that's another thing like you're on us, uh, or what I found, like, cause you know, you're honest and relate to like trauma. Right. And I, mm -hmm. I, I found there can be like a, I find that sometimes your honest trauma can be like, a, can kind of fragment things with the, with the planets that it might touch, right? In some capacity. Okay. So I'm, I'm like thinking about like, um, like with the sun, I don't know, like conjunct the sun. I, and this is, again, this is not universal. This is just an idea tossing out, right? Like, so anybody with like your honest sun, aspects don't be thinking I'm saying you're fragmented but it does it does seem like it, it could be possible like the identity being kind of uh I don't know fragmented in ways I can see where you're going with that and I could see that being a possibility yeah yeah where it's like because you kind of do need your identity to be fixed a little bit in order to oh. like survive right so like I could see that as for some people, uh, like, um, yeah, I could see what you mean. Yeah, I, that's, it came out sounding a lot. <laughs> I think it came out sounding worse than it sounded in my head I, or scarier than it sounded in my head. But, um, but yeah, that seems like that could be possible. Um, what about like, um, what about like the opposition? You're on a sun opposition. Yeah, so with the opposition, um, okay, so usually with the opposition, the planet opposite is the brightest um, that it's going to be, right? And so it kind of ends up being the most out of control. So it's like the person sort of grapples with the need to control changes or, and, and sometimes my experience of oppositions is it's like they're either all the way on one side or all the way on the other and they'll feel like they're going back and forth. So it's like they're going to have periods of life where they might feel like they're really secure in their identity and then maybe periods where some big huge change happens and everything's like changing and it's just lots of instability but then go right back you know as soon as possible to that um that feeling another thing is they might feel yeah they might feel really knocked off their course like when when changes happen more so than more so than i would say average just because of that the opposition pulling them all the way into the chaos or the the change or the and that might show up as someone who like has one identity for 30 years and then bam, they change into a different, you know, like it could be something sort of like that where it's like, well, oh, when I was a teenager, I was this. And then when I was in my twenties, I was this. That would make sense also, because like, if, if you've got the sun opposite, you're honest, that means when you've got, yeah, that would, that would make a lot of sense, especially with like that, the, the midlife crisis, you're honest opposition, right? <laughs> transit Uranus opposite natal Uranus that would make sense because that, that Uranus would be like conjunct their son opposing opposing natal Uranus like oh we're gonna shake some shit up now <laughs> yeah well and it's almost like with the opposition you would maybe feel like you can't be yourself without having to worry about some outside force trying to change you that's another way it could show up right is like having someone else in your life want to make you be different or make you more um adventurous or you know uranian if that makes sense or <laughs> challenging you know having like someone who's less stat let, like outside of the status quo challenge you every once in a while to the things that are really core to your being that's another way that could show up too yeah that's definitely good that's totally good um let's see Instead of doing all the ones for all the planets or whatever, we'll 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 talk about the different conjunctions. I'm kind of coming up with this on the fly. We'll do, we'll talk about the different conjunctions, right? And then maybe do like different random aspects, a few of the, a few of them. So that way, you know, yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. What about like Uranus and Moon coming together? Okay, this one I would say is more challenging because yeah. the moon is so sensitive and Uranus is so um, activating and energizing that it's like, and the moon, I would say more than any, even more than the sun needs stability. Um, mm -hmm. So like Uranus conjunct the moon, it's like, well, one way this would show up would be kind of fun because it's like when you want to do self care and take care of yourself, you do just do something wild and crazy and it will make you feel better. You know, there'll be that sort of like that, um, that, that, uh, restlessness infused into your, like, into your emotions or how you take care of yourself or others. So it's like, um, there's that side, which might be more positive where you could just be fun, you know, like the way that you decompress is like really fun or different or like, um, sudden, you know, all of a sudden yeah. you need a bunch of sleep and then all of a sudden you don't, you know, like your, your emotional needs or your physical needs could be, um, not just like changing, but like, um, consistent for a while and then different, you know, so that could show up like that, but like, personality wise i would think a uranus uh, moon person would be kind of interesting they yeah i'll, I'll say I'll, i don't have this personally i do have clients that, that have had this and i will say this it is not universal again this is not but they often oftentimes there is something funky with their family um, it doesn't necessarily have to be funky bad. It can be funky good, but there's something different. <laughs> Oftentimes, again, not universal, but a little different. Something a little different about the about the family, about the totally, and, and even perhaps what um, what they need emotionally too. Uh, how they were perhaps uh, conditioned to deal with emotions might have been a little different. Um, not bad. Again, doesn't have to be bad. I have seen it swing in a really challenging way, but doesn't have to. It can also just be they had a more eccentric, a more eccentric parent that, you know, you know. Yeah, that is such a good point. And I think I think that the like the worst case scenario with Uranus Moon is like the disappearance of a caretaker. Mm -hmm. You know, where they're the separation from a caretaker. Or abandonment. Yeah, abandonment. And then maybe uh also a in like like you talked about, uh, uh, what'd you talk about? Like the nurturing style or, or the, I can't think of the name of it, but like when you need space instead of closeness, that thing, you know, the, where, you know, some people they need more, like when they're upset, they want someone to be there for them. But a Uranus moon problem person probably wants to get away from the situation <laughs> to deal with their emotions and then come back when they're feeling better. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They, they might have a little bit more of a, because your honest can also be kind of detached, you know? So it's like, they, they may not, they may not be the kind that want, like they're crying, they're upset. They may not want hugs to, you know, or, or, or being consoled, like say perhaps a moon in cancer might like, um, you know, that is so true. Yeah. That's really true. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. What about, um, which, which uh, do you do you see like a certain one more than others as far as like um, your honest moon? Is there one that, that stands out that you see a lot? I mean, I've looked at the square a lot just because I have it. Ah, um, okay. All right. And so uh, like an, a celebrity example of this is Hillary Clinton has Uranus square of the moon. Okay. Um, and this one is like. I would say Uranus opposite or square the moon are definitely not going to be easier just because of of everything we talked about and like the square being the need for adjustment between your emotional needs and like shocking situations. So so kind of the stereotypical example is like emotional shocks, right? Like in relationships, right? Because the moon being the people you love or the people you um, who care for you, right? So like having an emotionally shocking event. But another side of it too is how Uranus affects the moon, which can just make the person again, kind of feel 
sort of like they don't fit in or like yeah. identify more as the weird person in the group or or feel like they have to kind of um try really hard to uh connect you know or still feel disconnected in a crowded room kind of a thing yeah 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 and i would yeah and i could yeah and depending on what else was going on in the chart, I feel like it could be, that could, that could be even more, it could be something, it could be something that like, um, the person could find really, really, really challenging or something that maybe they lean into and kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of make it work for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say Uranus sort of pours energy into the moon. So they're probably going to have strong emotional, um, experiences. So like that could be, that could be dealt with in a positive way. And I would say with the trine, it probably is more easily handled, but like, yeah. And, and, you know, I wonder too, like they might also enjoy things that would be shocking to other people. Right. I don't know if that makes sense, but like, uh -huh. I mean, I see this a lot with Venus, but maybe with the moon <laughs> as well, where it's like, if you, if you shock me in just the right way, I might fall in love with you kind of a thing, uh -huh. you know, where it's like the proper in the proper way, not in like, cause when I think of emotional shocks, I think of like, oh, your partner, you caught your partner cheating, you know, like that's what I think of, but yeah, and, and, that's a shitty shock. <laughs> yeah. But it could be like, an emotional shock like someone just like shows up and like challenges you in just the right way and you know it's like exciting that kind of thing too yeah where it's more like fireworks in a sense or or at yes least they, feel they feel electric that's a good way because Uranus is like electricity you know, like yeah yeah well and that's another thing about <laughs> Uranus moon or probably any of the planet any of the personal planets is like the person might thrive better in situations that are might be considered like shocking in a bad way to someone else. So that could mm -hmm. be like they like being scared, you know, like watching scary movies or like uh, other just <laughs> anything that would be like kind of unsettling to like a non Uranus person. <laughs> yeah, might be more like home with Uranus, you know, <laughs> Uranus squaring the moon. Yeah, that makes sense um what about let's play with uranus mercury yeah okay so this one i think of as like having it's almost like you really there's a lot of charge around what you have to say so i've th seen this show up as the person feels like like they just have to like there's pressure right there's pressure to say a certain thing and they just have to say it and usually, usually the clients I work with, it's not like this isn't a positive function in their life. But then <laughs> I've also seen it in like sometimes charts of comedians will have aspect from Uranus to Mercury. And I think it's that ability to kind of speak like energized speech, you know, where it's like you ha really have to pour energy into an audience when you're a comedian and you have to be able to shock people in the right way and you, do. you know know exactly how and when and and that like timing you know that moment to strike i think that that shows up with uranus mercury although it can be felt as positive or negative just depending yeah it, it yeah if, if the timing is just right if the yeah, it's like it's like a it's almost like a delicate balance in a sense. <laughs> Many things have to be in place, but yeah, I I know what you mean. If they can, that aspect can or those planets touching really in in any aspect can kind of um, can kind of bring in like like in the, in terms of comedy, like it can bring in um, just the right amount of shocking. Because uh, sometimes, I mean, really shocking things that people say can be really really funny in the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah like, yeah right. or they can be really really awful just depending on <laughs> like how it plays out and sometimes so this might be you're honest in my chart but sometimes even the really really awful shit you're just like what the fuck did they just say <laughs> you're just like, oh like know. you can roll with it eat more easily <laughs> maybe i don't know maybe some sometimes yes yeah, some things you know people say it's just like what the fuck did they just say and you'll <laughs> laugh at it like you know like wow that that was a that was kind of a shocking thing to say but uh i guess i'm gonna appreciate it for the shock value <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. 
I think it could also give you like a busy mind, right? Or like a restless mind where Uranus could, can, I, cause I always see Uranus is like pouring energy into the planet. So yeah. it's like, you know, lots of thoughts going on at once or thinking on overdrive or, um, I think Mercury Uranus of all of them is probably the most like nervous tension or like, yeah. um, you know, when people they're sitting and they can't stop moving their hands, you know, that kind of energizing thing, you know, where they're just buzzing with energy. I think of that with Uranus Mercury as well. I also think of like the mad scientist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I mean that in a, I don't mean that in a, in a bad way, but it is like, it, it, it you know, the person creating Frankenstein and <laughs> this is kind of what I, but again, yeah. I don't mean that in a negative way. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like that sudden eureka moment, that aha. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I see that kind of play out regardless of what's going, of, of what Uranus and Mercury are doing in the chart, like what, what aspect they're making though, of course, obviously like the more challenging aspects, the squares, the oppositions, uh, there might be more of a, of attention and wanting to go roll with it. Right. <laughs> then if there's like a, you know, a sextile or a trying or. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes it can be like brilliance too, you know, where oh, it's like, totally that the ideas might be the zany mad scientist that no one <laughs> listens to or it could be like just total brilliance or like that ability to think like way beyond your time or that yeah. solves society's problems that kind of stuff too absolutely yeah 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 should we um venus sure yeah <laughs> we both her and I both have um, Venus and Uranus conjunct <laughs> in our charts. So has that been fun for you? <laughs> because it's sometimes fun for me. <laughs> it's sometimes fun. It is sometimes fun because at least there is fun with this one because it's like you can have love at first sight, right? You can really like, not, not in every situation, but sometimes with venus uranus you meet someone and you just can become really fast friends with them or you can become really fast lovers it's just like boom it happens and it can go the other way too where <laughs> where it's like because that tension in relationships can just build and build and build until the person hits a breaking point and then there's a release so i've seen this be um where the person who has the aspect is making the break but i've also seen it where it's other people breaking away from them suddenly over something that seems really, really small um, and like shallow usually. But I think, I think that's the thing is usually the breaking point isn't what caused the issue. Usually no, it's, it's like, up. yeah, it like builds up and then there's that last straw, mm -hmm. but it can yeah. still be really fun with the, um, the sudden the sudden love or the like the sudden connection that you can get with it yes we, we, yeah um that yeah yeah and the, and the and the thing that you that you mentioned about um sometimes breaking away or sometimes people breaking away i found that happen um um in both ways in in, in my life it's kind of played out in both ways at different times yeah, I would say for me, I'm usually the one leaving. <laughs> and, <laughs> and astrology's helped me understand this one because it really helped me see that like there's a buildup first and that if I can bring my conscious awareness to what's building up. Yeah. And then like intentionally release the tension before it gets like, like you really can work with Uranus transits if you have that tension that builds up through yeah. the awareness and like consciously finding ways to release the tension or have the conversation that needs to be had at the beginning <laughs> yeah in my case <laughs> instead of waiting yeah. till now i can't take it anymore you know yeah yeah that is <clears throat> that is good advice here for sure <laughs> absolutely i think it's i think it's hard uh, because it's like it's really easy to just 
it, it it's so weird to have the aspect because it's like it's it's so easy to just let that tension build because it's it's comfortable it's like it's normal yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. right so it's like you yeah. have to really try hard to to not and i i also think this one shows up for me too with like maybe because i have it square the moon with like close like allowing intimacy and uh -huh. that's another thing I've tried to work with because it's like you can practice, you know, expanding your tolerance for closeness. And so that's something I've also I wouldn't say I've mastered, but um, found a found a bit of a, a way to work through, you know, although, you know, most people, once you get to the breaking point, that's not the time for that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's before. It, yeah it's yeah. when that's not happening is when you can use the tools yes yes but yeah but but yeah i mean but this is this is really good advice for anybody that might have this or really even definitely the conjunction i would say definitely you know the square to venus the opposition to venus uh the, the i mean the, the conjunction is not really difficult but it can go either way it can be, you know kind of like um but yeah this is good advice for really um for anybody yeah well and sometimes too i always think of uranus also like an on and off switch yeah so it's like you can feel like that with romance with venus or even sometimes with money in certain ways um but like yeah. being able to know that the way you function in love or the way that you function with money is on and off sometimes also helps because then you can just be like, okay, my switch is off right now, you know, and just like, you know, knowing yeah. your natural rhythms and being able to like get the space you need in love, if that's the case, or, you know, you know, however that ends up working out, but there, there still is a lot of fun though, with Uranus Venus <laughs> in, in relationships. So I don't want to make it sound like it's yeah. all horrible. Oh, no, there definitely, there definitely is. I mean, um, <laughs> there definitely is. You also might find yourself in some strange relationships. <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> <laughs> because yeah uh yeah some and, it, it, and some of them have been delightfully strange some of them have been a strange that i wish i'd never experienced <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know it, it just you know it's it's a wild card going away but you know that is so <laughs> funny it's so true but it's like it's it there's there's something fun about that like you know, being attracted to people who are different from you. Yeah. So like whatever you are, if you're a progressive, you want to, you're going to meet a conservative or, if, you know, like <laughs> if you were raised poor, you're going to find a rich person, you know, like whatever is the opposite of you would call yourself, you're going to find yourself attracted to those kind of people. And, and it's fun. It's fun to like meet different people from different walks of life and, and like, experience change and like that that excitement through relationships sometimes too absolutely um ab absolutely and that, you know <clears throat> i think those are some of the sorts of relations it might it might again be being a serious conduct in my chart but i do find that that you can learn a lot from those like just in general and and yeah. about yourself too you know what i mean um they can be if nothing else if nothing else great learning tools yeah yeah it, it really is like i think of a, one of my exes who like i would always buy at this time in my life i would always buy the cheapest thing he would always buy the most expensive thing because he thought that meant it was going to be good and like little things like that like it's not a big deal but like little experiences like that throughout your life kind of do sort of expand your world through the relationship it like yeah, yeah it like gives you a different it's almost like a portal to another world within a human being kind of yes yes it absolutely yeah it is like yeah it absolutely is or like they'll want to you know give you new music or you know uh -huh. just like all kinds of different things yeah they'll, yeah it is really fun they'll, they'll they'll turn you on to different forms of art different uh aesthetics if you will um yeah things that you may not have thought you'd like or whatever yeah totally yeah that's true well i guess we'll go ahead and stop 
for now. I'm trying to keep these just so everybody, so it's not like I'm we're trying I'm trying to keep these a certain uh <laughs> a certain length so that way they circulate well on on YouTube. Um I guess we'll go ahead and head off. But if you want to share where you can be found. Yeah, um, you can find me on YouTube at Saffron Sage Astrology. And you can also find me on Instagram at The Saffron Sage and as well on Facebook, The Saffron Sage. And I will put that in the um, in the description box below. And go check out her YouTube channel because we'll also be doing a video on Jupiter in general and Jupiter aspects um, that will be up there. I'm not totally sure when you're going to upload that, but it should be around the same time probably around the same time I, I posted this one. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for wanting to come on. <laughs> yes, thanks for having me. It's always fun as always. It is. Yeah, it's been a while too. It was like, I think it was like a, close to a year ago. Yeah, it's, so, time flies. <laughs> it does. I'm like, yeah, it really does. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> all right. Well, um, to everybody watching this, I will see y'all later. Bye.